So welcome again to our 11th night or 10th? Our 10th night. Welcome to our 10th night of Hope Beyond Tomorrow, Daniel and Revelation Seminar. Let's have a word of prayer. Thank you, Lord, that we can come to you in this evening. Thank you for bringing us safely here again, where we can listen to your word. Lord, as we're going to study the great controversy that's going on in this world, Lord, touch our hearts with your Holy Spirit, and Lord, show us to the remedy, which is Jesus. It's my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So tonight we are talking about hope beyond the great controversy. Hope beyond the great controversy. And this controversy is between Jesus and Satan. Between Jesus and Satan there is a controversy going on. If we look into our world, we see wars. We see there is wars all the time. I have a friend there in Myanmar and I see there is war going on in Myanmar as well. Everywhere we see, a, especially there in the Middle East and in some countries, there is war going on. So where does it come from? There is a picture of South Africa. We see anarchy. We see things are being burned and there are anarchy going on in this world. There you can see as well. Things is not what they seem. Things is not how they are supposed to be. What's going on in this world? There are violence. We, are, we don't feel safe in our houses anymore. You can just look at the houses and you see them from outside. It looks like prisons. Why? Because we don't feel safe. We are scared people will come in and maybe point a gun against you. I know there's people, if they go to Johannesburg, they are so scared for getting even a flat tire because you don't want to be catch alone on the highway. You don't want to be catch alone. What is going on in this world? Where does all this come from? Abuse. We see abuse in this world. We see that people and sin is possessing people. People don't know what's going on in this world anymore. If we look at all this, we might think, where is the hope? Where does all this come from? Where did it all originate from? You know, you get pickpockets as well, people stealing, people don't have that conscience to take, to not take somebody else's things. Where did it all originate? Where did sin come from? But before we ask the question, what is sin? Let's look into the dictionary. What is sin? The first explanation given there is, it's an immoral act considered to be a transgression against divine law. There is a definition in the dictionary. It says, it is an immoral act considered to be a transgression against divine law. Or a sin in the eyes of God, there is another explanation. Or let's look at some synonyms. It's an immoral act, a wrong, a wrongdoing, an act of evil or wickedness, transgression, crime, offense, misdeed, misdemeanor. So that is the definition that you can find in dictionaries. But what does the Bible define sin as? 1 John 3 verse 4 says, Whoever commits sin transgresses also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. What is sin? Sin is the transgression of the law. That is a clear definition that we can find in the Bible about sin. So what, how did sin come into this world? How did it get into this world that God created? Did God create Satan? Did he create Satan is the question then. Let us see what the Bible says. If God 
created Satan. Ezekiel 28, 13 says, You have been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. The sardius, the topaz, the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, and the sapphire, and the emeralds, and the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanships of your tablets and of your pipes was prepared in you in the day that you were created. Does it sound like this creation was something good? Yes, it was good, full of beautiful stones to describe him. It was good, this creation. Verse 14 says, You are the anointed cherub that covers, and I have set you so. So God gave this angel a position, and he made him beautifully. And he says, and I have set you so, you were on the holy mountain of God. You have walked up and down the middle of the stones of fire. Can you see he had a position in heaven, this angel? And then he says in verse 15, you were perfect in your ways from the day that you were created. That God created something good here. Yes, it was something good. But then it says, Till iniquity was found in you. So it was perfect until it made a choice. You see? Then iniquity was found in him. So even angels were created with freedom of choice. So here we see, God did not create Satan. God created a perfect angel that was perfect in his ways until iniquity was found in him. By the multitude of your merchandise, they have filled the middle of you with violence. And you have sinned. Therefore, I will cast you as a profane out of the mount of God, and I will destroy you, O covering chair, from the middle of the stones of fire. Why is God casting him out? Because he sinned. Sin cannot exist in the presence of God, so God has to banish him out of heaven. Verse 17 says, Your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You have corrupted your wisdom by reason of your brightness. I will cast you into the ground. I will lay you before kings that they may behold you. What was the problem in the heart of Lucifer while he was in heaven? Pride. Pride was the problem in his heart. You see, he was lifted up because of how he looked. That is why it is so important to teach our children humility. You see, yes. we should teach our children to be humble. Because if we are lifted up, there is a big chance that we can be sinning. So here God said, I will cast you to the ground. Verse 18. You have defiled your sanctuaries by the multitude of your iniquities, by the iniquity of your traffic. Therefore will I bring forth a fire from the middle of you. It shall devour you, and I will bring you to ashes on the earth in the sight of all them that behold you. Here God is giving us a prophecy. Although Satan was kicked out of heaven, when he was still Lucifer and he became Satan, he was kicked out of heaven, and God said he will not rule forever, there will be hope beyond this sin problem. And he says, and he prophesied, he says, there is going to be a cremation. Because he says, I will make you to ashes. So if Satan ever tempts you in your life,
Just show him. If Satan shows you your past, show him his future. Because God prophesied that he will make him to ashes. He, there will be a cremation for Satan. Let's see what Isaiah says. What happened when God defeated Lucifer from heaven? Isaiah 14 verse 12. How are you fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How are you cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? Why did God throw him out? Because of the four eyes. Before the four eyes. Isaiah 14, 30 says, For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also in the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Can you see what was the problem in Satan's heart? It was all I, I, I. All about me. That's why we should not be self-centered. We shouldn't have pride in our lives. The problem with Lucifer in heaven was pride. And that is how he became Satan. Revelation 12, 7 talks about this war that was raging in heaven. It says, And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not. Neither was their place found in heaven anymore. Who won this battle? Michael won this battle. Do, do you know what Michael means? Michael means the one that is like God. So can you see, this was Michael, the one that is like God, who fought with his angels against the dragon and his angels. So can you see that there was a rebellion in heaven? Satan had other angels following him. He convinced them that they can have a higher position. And they raged a war in this rebellion. And that is why we say the war is against Jesus, who is like God. Because he is the son of God. You see? So Michael and his angels fought. The one that is like God fought against the dragon and his angels fought. But their place could not be found in heaven anymore. Verse 9 says, And the great dragon was cast out. And now we don't even have to go outside the Bible to think what is this dragon because it says it itself. He is also that old serpent called the devil and Satan. So who is the dragon? Satan. Satan. Which deceives the whole world. He was cast into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. So when Satan was kicked out of heaven, God quarantined Satan where? On earth. He quarantined him on earth. So that is how Satan ended up on earth. Let's see what happened when Satan went to this earth. Genesis 2 verse 15 says, and the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat of it, for in the day that you eat thereof you shall surely die. Here God showed that He has given man freedom of choice. 
freedom of choice, the same as he gave all the created angels as well, freedom of choice. And he put a, if he gives someone freedom of choice, is it freedom of choice if there is not another choice? Then it's not freedom of choice. That's why there was a test put it in the middle of the garden. There was a test in the middle of the garden. And, it, and the test was that tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And it says, And the Lord God commanded them, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat of it, for in the day that you eat of it you shall surely what? Die. die. You shall surely die. This is what God said. But what did Satan say? What did Satan say to Eve? And the serpent said to the woman, You shall not surely die. So Satan actually told Eve, God is a liar. God is a liar. So Satan said, You shall not surely die. But what shall happen? And when the woman now saw the tree, so after Satan went to Eve and conversed with her, he convinced her that God is keeping something good from her. He actually told her that if you eat of it, you will be like who? God. Is that not the same problem that Satan had in heaven? He, he, he wasn't pleased with his position. He wanted to be God. Now he's kicked out of heaven and he says the same to me. No, no, God is wrong. You can be like him if you eat of this tree. But God told them, no, you will die. So now after Satan talked to Eve, what did she see? And when the woman saw that the tree was what? Good. Did God say the tree was good? No. He said it's not good for food. But now she saw that it is good for food. And that it was pleasant to the eyes. And the tree to desire to make one wise. She took off the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also to her husband with her and he did eat. So now after Satan was speaking to her, when she looked at the fruit again, now suddenly it looked beautiful. Now suddenly it looked like something that can make you wise. Isn't that what's going on in the world today? They are calling evil good and good evil. Isn't that what's going on in the world today? It is still happening today. And then God did not go to Eve and say, Oh no, I, I told you so, you shouldn't have eaten of it. Listen what he said, out of love, he said. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. And it shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. God went to them and said, Okay, this has happened now. But there is a solution. There is coming seed out of you that will crush this Satan's head. And this is a, uh, the first sermon preached on the gospel of Jesus Christ. He told them, there is coming seed, singular, out of the bloodline of Eve, and that one will crush the devil's head. And that happened when? On the cross. Then God told them what is the penalty. He said to them what he said before, and he said, In the sweat of your face shall you eat bread. Till you return to the ground, for out of it were you taken, for dust are you, and to dust you shall return. You see, here God's telling them, I told you, if you eat of this tree, you will die. And here he tells them, you will be 
become dust again. You will die. You will not live forever. Now Satan is then behind all the destruction of this world. Can you see that? Can you see the origin of sin? Now Isaiah 14, 16 says this. They that see you, now looking on to Lucifer, they that see you shall narrowly look on you and consider you saying, what will they say about Lucifer? Is it this man that made the earth to tremble, that that shake the kingdoms, that made the world as a wilderness, and destroyed the cities thereof, and opened not the house of his prisoners? You see what the people will do? God is going to show the world, and he has shown it already, that Satan is the origin of sin. He is the one that makes nation fight against nation. He is the one that makes the one to break into your house. He is the one that makes the abuse against women and children. He is the one behind theft. He is the one behind all the sin problems in this world. Can you see that? He is the origin. From Adam unto us, Romans 3, 23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. What does sin do? Sin makes a separation between us and God. That is what happened in the Garden of Eden. Sin created a separation between Adam and Eve and God. Because when they heard God, remember they were always in the presence of God. They could commune with Him face to face. But now after they sinned, what happened? They hid themselves. Suddenly they, they saw that they were naked. Even that fruit that they ate didn't give them wisdom. It made them fools. <laughs> Because did you think, when they sinned and realized they are naked, did you think it was a wise thing to do, to take leaves to make clothes? Do you think that is wise? How long will that clothes last? It will definitely not be like Nike or G clothing. It will not be like that. It will wither even in a day or two. Mm -hmm. Can you see? Not even the fruit made them wise. Yeah. Although it looked like it will, but it actually made them fools. So we saw there was a separation in the relationship between them and God. And then when God started talking to them, asking what was going on, we could see that there was a separation also in their relationship between husband and wife. Because when God asked Eve, what did, or he asked first for Adam, what did he do? And he said, not me, she. <laughs> and then when he went to her, he said, what have you done? She said, no, 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 not me. The snake. But can you see, secondary, the blame was not even for Eve, from Adam to Eve, but he said actually, not me, but Eve, the woman you gave me. <laughs> and then when he got to the woman, the woman said, no, 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 not me, the snake that you made. <laughs> can you see the broken relationship going on here? Can you see what sin does? It separates us from God and from each other. This is what happened in the world. This is the biggest problem in this world. This is why there is all these problems in the world. This is why one nation cannot live together with another. This is why this country is making war with that one. This is why there is all the sin in this world. 
Sin came by one fall in Romans 5, verse 12. Why, as by one man, sin entered into the world, and death by sin. And death passed on to all men, for that all have sinned. Do you think people are still dying? Yes. So it is true. It is true. I'm sure each one of us sitting here attended a funeral in their lifetime already. Yes. So yes, death went through, to, through all generations. Even the lifetimes went down. Because Adam lived 930 years and it went down even until today. If you can make a graphic of it, you will see even until today people are living less and less and less. The opposite of what evolution is telling us that everything is getting better. <coughs> everything is not getting better. Sin has brought death. For until the law sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. The penalty of sin in Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, and I'm so happy fall did not stop there. He says the penalty of and the wages of sin is death. But there is a but. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You see, only way where we can get eternal life is if we fix the relationship or go back to the one that wants to fix the relationship. And that is Jesus Christ. Who was wrong? Was it me or God? Me. I was wrong. But God took the first step in doing the reconciliation. He made a plan. If somebody offended you, will you be the one going to him and saying sorry? This is what God did. God took the step and he gave us Jesus. He took the step to rectify this broken relationship. But he was not wrong. We were wrong. Can you see that? Can you see the love of God? But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. God's love is a crucial remedy for the sin problem. There is a remedy. It is not a natural remedy. It is the ultimate remedy for the sin problem. John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have the everlasting life. And you see, there's a remedy. We need to go to Jesus. We need to go to Jesus and He will give us everlasting life. We need to believe in Him. Then we can escape. Then we can get immortality back that was lost in Eden. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. God gave the remedy to the sin problem. God gave us salvation. Romans 5, 8 says, But God commends His love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Even before you knew Christ or you knew the Bible, God already had your name in His mind. When Jesus died on the cross, He had your name in His mind. He made a way of escape. In Christ is life. 1 Corinthians 15, 22 says, For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Can you see we have a choice? Do you accept that free gift from Christ? Will you grab it with both your hands? 
so that you can live. Remember the other day we wrote the text that says, God has no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that they should turn and live. God wants us to turn and live. He doesn't want any to be destroyed. Jesus is the way. John 14, 6 says, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Just as we saw yesterday, that only door of the sanctuary, only through that one door is salvation, and that door is Jesus Christ. Acts 4, 12 says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Only one, Jesus Christ. There is not many, there is not even many ways to heaven, only one. And that is through Jesus Christ. How do we get this remedy? John 1, 12 says, But as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become sons of God even to them that believe in his name. How do we get this remedy? Is to make a full commitment to Jesus Christ. To make a full commitment not to follow in the broad way. Not to follow in that way that Solomon said, there's a way that looks right but the end of it is destruction. Let's follow on the narrow way. Let's follow in through Jesus, believing in Him. Ephesians 2 8 says, For by grace are you saved, through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. How can you benefit from a gift? If I give you a gift and this is nothing you wanted and you don't accept it, do you think you will benefit? But God is giving us a gift and He's holding it out today to each one of you. <clears throat> the only way you can benefit from it is if you take it and accept it. Then you can benefit from Jesus' salvation. He's holding it out today. Will you accept that free gift? Paul said, not of works, lest any man should boast. Nothing we can do can help us to get into heaven. Nothing. We need Jesus. Only through Jesus. And it's a free gift. 1 John 5 11 says, And this is the record that God has given us eternal life. And this life is in His Son, just like Jesus said. He is the life. He that has the Son has life, and he that has not the Son of God has not life. Life is only in Jesus Christ. Jesus invites us and he says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. Maybe Jesus is knocking on your door tonight. Will you open the door? Because Jesus wants to spend an eternity with you. Will you open the door? If you want to make a new commitment to Jesus tonight, if you want to open the door tonight, stand up and I will pray for you. Thank you for this beautiful message of salvation. Lord, 
Lord, thank you that we can know the origin of sin. Lord, thank you that you dealt with it and that you had a plan even before the foundation of this world. Thank you for Jesus that is giving us that remedy of sin. Lord, thank you that it is a free gift and that we can do nothing to earn it. Lord, but you see the people standing here. They want to grab that gift with both hands. They want to spend an eternity with you. Mm -hmm. Lord, may you help each one with your Holy Spirit to every morning make this commitment and that they will hold on to your salvation, which is in Jesus. May you guide them even closer and closer until they step all the way on the narrow way, which is the way of life, which is only through Jesus. Is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.